Okay, God's helpers, beings, advanced beings who know things, technology, they can build things like the pyramids and they were the original scapegoat for man's iniquities. They were sent off the earth by the will of the people on the earth and we can bring them back with our will if only we knew about them and that's what the elites are hiding from us that's why they're putting so much deception out there to keep us from finding the truth because as soon as we know the truth we can bring them back just by wanting them to come back well what else would you want to know Yes, they built the pyramids and the Tiwanaka stuff. And it wasn't them fighting each other. It was man was wishing them away, attacking them. They wouldn't fight back. They're peaceful. They're basically God. God's life force was within them. God can create any being he, she wants on the planet and inhabit it. God is currently all the animals, all the insects, all the fish, all the birds. They all got God's life force in them. So God likes to keep his, her eyes and ears on us. Because <laughs> we're his, her children. And um, God loves us very much. So... We can bring them back. That would be good. Let's make this happen. What else do you want to ask? You want to know where they've been? They've been on the far side of the moon. And probably pop into other planets as well. But on the far side of the moon, there's things that we've never seen. And that's why all the moon landings were false and so on the back of the moon, I don't know exactly, but they have the ability to live there. Um, it gets just as much sun as the side of the moon that always faces Earth. That day would be a two-week day. Um, so if there was, say, a huge crater on the other side of the moon, it wouldn't have to be that huge even, a deep chasm full of water, there could be trees, there could be everything that there is on Earth. I mean, that atmosphere might be an issue, but if it's in a deep enough chasm, maybe there is enough air there for the trees to absorb carbon dioxide and kick out oxygen, and it would stay there because of the gravity of the planet. So... You know, and they've got technology to keep warm or whatever in the night. Or, you know, and they've got their little spaceships. <laughs> of course they've got spaceships. Read the Emerald Tablets, the Book of Thoth. Came here on a spaceship. Buried it off one of the corners of the pyramid. Anyway, that's digressing a bit. Okay. But all this fits together. Um... You know, because, you know, with this critical stage at the moment in our soul's growth, you know, not not our just little... I see, like, the lives we have on Earth here, it's like little toy lives, little, little short ones, you know, getting us used to it. And we've had so many, but we haven't had them in beings that were capable of abstract thought and contemplation and reflection and you know, wondering what you are and that curiousness. You know, we haven't been able to... We've had, of course, we've been curious before, like as animals, still be curious, but probably curious about, oh, what's around the corner, instead of, what am I? You know, we, we've got that brain capability that we haven't had um, before. And... Yes, we've had this capability for about 8,000 years or something like that. But, 
you know, it had to go wrong first. So Adam was the first one with this capability, if that was his name or not. Uh, so he was, you know, at that time, he was like uh, God's God's um, number one right-hand man, if you like, just the, the soul who at that point in time is doing the best with with what we had at that time. So Adam was, you know, he was in his, he was in his, doing really well, right? And so anyway, he first had the capability, but inevitably, having that much power in a sense that we have got, that we don't know now, but when it was first given, it was, it was given, it was explained. Adam knew what he could do, but, you know, something took over and kind of went a bit wrong. And then, you know, his children, something, you know, there was an issue there with Cain and Abel. That was an issue. It wasn't all Cain's fault, because if you think about it, um, an offering of meat was prized over an offering of grain, whereas in the Elohim, in the first Genesis 1-1, says, you know, basically what we're going to eat is fruit. And then suddenly someone's getting more prized for offering meat, which is actually wrong. So Cain was right to be angry. He just obviously went over the top. Anyway, then we get the history of the earth, as you know. So at about the time of Noah would have been the time when they basically said to the God's helpers, you know, get lost. We don't want you here anymore. Probably uh, because, you know, they probably felt bad and they knew that they wanted the wrong sort of things and, you know, that wasn't that wasn't good, so nobody likes their shame to be sort of shown up, do they? Um, so, you know, it was like probably made them uncomfortable, like, oh, you're always looking at what I'm doing. <laughs> It would be in the heart anyway. It would just be the the way they felt. And that's what has the power with God. You know, if you ever want to speak to God, you really got to speak from the heart. You know, God will come when you call out with your heart. And that's usually when people hit rock bottom and they're not even thinking with their mind anymore. It's just calling out to God and God's always there. And it's so familiar to us. We... <laughs> We know it, we know it. Anyway, <clears throat> um, so, yeah, so probably around the time of Noah, so, in, you know, that that is the scapegoat, the original scapegoat is like, and still in the Bible, you know, oh, it's their fault, you know, who these uh, sons of gods came down and had sex with our women and, you know, and then they were born monsters and, Da, 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 da. it's a scapegoat I mean I've actually understood that a little bit better in the sense that um, in the sense they're still trying to make sense out of who these people were how do we describe these people, these giants where did these giants come from and and probably giants is the wrong word because it should either mean those from above right or yeah I think that is the proper Hebrew translation anyway so anyway, so, you know, they're wondering how these beings got there. And I'm thinking, well, it must have been gods who came down and had sex with, like, people like us because they look a bit like us. So, you know, that's the mix, but they can do more than us. So there's the gods. So they're, like, thinking of them as half god, half man, which is actually exactly right. They are god in a physical body that's similar to a human body. But probably slightly advanced that you know god's god's not gonna let us kind of beat him her is, is she i mean he she designed this way this plan to bring us into our through our awakening so you know he's not gonna have planned it so that you know it could all go wrong <laughs> this is just not gonna happen it's not going to happen. It's all going to go good, and it's coming. It's coming soon, and and this could be part of it. You know, we call God's helpers back to earth. I was just thinking, you know, 
I'd love to have a chat with them about the pyramid. <laughs> it would just be so good. It would bring that authority back on Earth. You know, that, like, let's just find the proper way that we should act on this planet and and agree on it. Let's just have someone who cannot be denied that they are... Um, they are going to be correct and it's going to be right and they're not going to be biased towards any one country or greed or anything like that. Don't we all want that? Don't we all really, really want that? I think we do. So what else are you going to ask? So that's, that's, that's the beings, that's who they are. And and what we're capable of. I mean, this is the next thing, you know. That got you've got science trying to invent quantum computers, you know, which are just flawed because the very fact that a quantum computer is going to work on different dimensions surely means it cannot be wholly made of parts from just this dimension. How could it then function on another dimension? It's crazy. But the one thing that is multidimensional, that does have an existence on all of the dimensions, is us and God. So God is just a version of us, like 10 billion years further on into the future. So how God is now, in 10 billion years time, we will be. And we'll have to deal with all our kids who are hating us for no good reason but we'll understand it by then in 10 billion years we'll understand it i mean we've been we've all been existing for about four billion years is my best estimation but bear in mind the first three billion years really we would have been still so 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 small so we must have started off so 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 small like we're mini universes basically, but tiny ones, you know, but had enough, had the characteristics of what we are because we're all unique, you know, and we've got part of God, our mother and father. So me being a boy, I, I'm i like my father in the sense that I'm my father's son, but not the same, different. And all my brothers, we're all different. We're all unique, but we're all a son of the same father. Anyway, so we would have started really, really small, like tiny little universes. And basically the portals to these universes are all at the centre of each spiral galaxy. And all these spiral galaxies all have a black hole in the centre. So that is the portal. So these mini universes. And for the first two or three billion years, you know, we were having lives on Earth as little single cell organisms and stuff like that and if you look at the history on earth it took like a billion or two years or something for a single cell organism to have another different single cell organism within it and the two had a symbiotic relationship and thereby were able to do more well you know, that's just like, you know, you're you, but you've got God with you and you've got this relationship. You know, I mean, if that took two billion years, we would have barely been aware of things really back then at all. But we did start that long ago. And then 300 million years ago, the Earth starts expanding because it was completely covered with water about a third of the size. And God starts expanding the Earth. And we've been fishies and stuff like that for a while, you know, undersea creatures. Just So all this time, all our lives in the first few billion years were underwater. You know, and then when we died, we'd, we'd go back to the home, our home dimension, you know, surrounded by God. And oh yeah, you know, we have, we have a soulmate, we're a pair. Just like God is a pair, mother and a father. So are we, mother and a pair male and female anyway so yeah and we've been all the fishes and 300 million years ago the earth starts expanding 
So being covered with a third of the size, being covered with water a third of the size, starts expanding and then the the sea level drops, right? And you start to get land emerging. Because we were ready for more development. So that's when it happened. And we started being land creatures and stuff like that. And, you know, and then the dinosaurs, 65 million years ago, we'd been dinosaurs for quite a while and it was time to move on. Some had evolved into little rats and stuff like this. And God's help us at that time. They would have been, they would have been around. They would have been around planning stuff, making stuff. And then we go on to, you know, a few million years ago when we were more like ape creatures and much more advanced. God's helpers would have been around. And then we get more like humanoid, Neanderthal type, you know. Getting closer to this to this humanoid that God has intended for us, for our awakening. And the latest gene mutation was the R1B1 or something. R1B. And that by now that gene will have been scattered probably through everybody. Maybe there are some who are still not quite ready. So we wouldn't all be ready exactly at the same time, would we? And this is the time we're in. It's coming. Let's bring them back. Let's bring them back. Yearn from the heart. We want God's helpers back on earth. We need. I think we need them, don't you? Like these leaders. They don't seem to be changing like the population they seem to be getting more and more like dictator like stronger and stronger leaders rather than meeker leaders because at the moment the world's at such a stretch and everything every nation has to really fight for its place in the world i mean you could call that survival of the fittest but you know, it could end up just wiping everybody out if that's the way we're going to go anyway god's not going to let that happen God's got his plan, and just do your bit, I'm doing my bit, so you do your bit, and um, it will happen, okay, thanks for listening, bye.